Okay, this is going to be um, maybe something I do every Sunday morning or something like that. A little bit of a week, a wrap-up of the week. And um, I'm feeling ranty. I'm feeling a little bit like ranting today, this morning. I watched, I mean, what the question is in the title is like, are beat makers, hip hop beat makers, ruining hip hop, or have they already ruined hip hop? Uh, the reason I bring this up, I got caught up in a little bit of a YouTube, uh, I guess the rabbit hole we call it, where you go down the rabbit hole. I was looking into this new P6 sampler, just checking it out. And I got caught up watching a couple of demo vi demo videos, I guess these guys would call them. And I don't really get it. Like the idea that you have a sampler, plug in yet another sampler. Yeah, you've got an MPC 3000. You've got a, an MPC 60. You have an X. You have a, a live. And now you have this P6 and, you know, you grab a turntable, you plug it into it, you show me you're sampling this and you're sampling that from a record, and then you start making the beat. And the beat is literally like the same beat that we've been hearing since, I don't know, 1991, 92, boom, 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 boom. I mean, do you really need to remake that beat again? And then now take the obligatory lo-fi sample. Oh, you take your sample and then you, now with this P, you know, with the P6, I'm adding lo-fi, I'm doing this. And these things are all done with like, you know, nice camera work, nice camera angles, good lighting. And what is the end... You know, the production value is there to some degree. Uh, but what what is the point is what I'm trying to get at. Like, what is the point that you can make the same beat over and over again? Or you're frustrated with this machine because you can't make the same exact beat that you make over and over and over again, and tell me the same things over and over again. I watched a guy pro programming a beat with an MPC X, I think it was. And, I mean, he didn't even really even seem to understand the idea of using the 16 levels. I thought that was pretty basic. So then another guy was doing the P6 thing, and he... Does the same beat, boom, ch, to boom, boom, ch. And then he decides to show us how he's going to finesse the kick drum by making a few of them a little bit later. And then he's going to make the snare drum a little bit earlier. Uh, then he's going to take the hi hat. I can't remember what he did to the hi hat. Um, then he's going to put lo fi on everything. Uh, he broke up the sample. He did the cute thing where you sample at, uh, I don't know how to describe it, up an octave, and then you tune it back down. Um, the sampling rate to him was important to his sound. It all sounds exactly the same. There is no difference. And they, these aren't. What are these things? They never turn into tunes. They never turn into songs that you hear anywhere. They're just beats. These are just hobbies. And I get it if your hobby is just reviewing new machines. And you better hope that new machines keep coming and don't complain about the idea that there are new things. Because if you don't have new machines to review, then you're... you're you don't have a gig. Uh, the other thing I watched was a little bit of an interview with a guy from Sweetwater Music talking to the Pro Tools expert guy at um, AES. I mean, I have 
Honestly, I haven't been to AES probably since like 1997. This is a rant video. Um, going to AES is like going to a giant convention of dudes who wear black t-shirts and, uh, you know, carry around a black backpack, black jeans too, um, Converse All-Stars, ponytails, the obligatory goatee. Now it might be full beard, I don't know. Um, and then there's a the hipster crowd with the mustache. I'm killing everybody. I'm killing it all. Maybe this will kill everything. Um, anyway, the guy from Pro Tools, Avid, uh, you know, they've run out of things to try and sell us on as far as using these DAWs and computer-based things. I mean, they all work phenomenally. They do everything. So what do we need now? We need um, stem extraction. I mean, how many remixes are there going to be? How many times do we need someone to extract a vocal from an instrumental and do something with it? Or uh, extract the music and get rid of the vocal so that you can then sample or chop up the, the instrumental? It, it's... They're literally just selling you on stuff, convincing you that you need this stuff because they've run out of stuff. So what else did he have? He, he was, they were, they were integrating stuff from a couple of different companies. Another one was like a D clicker, D noise thing. Uh, the other one, the other hype was this AI generated thing where, um, AI will analyze the vocal track and transcribe it and then put the lyrics underneath the vocal track um, <laughs> so that you could visually see the lyrics on the screen. And then I guess you'll be able to use this to punch in. So like if somebody says like punch me in after heart and before I love you, you'll be able to just select that in the lyrics on the timeline. I mean, I think that's one creative way that they're going to, uh, that people are going to use this. I mean, all of these things have nothing to do with like making good music, which is like what everyone's complaining about is that there isn't good music. It's because a good part of it could be because everyone's just caught up in thinking that these are the things that are important. It's it's somewhat maddening. I'm sure that I'll get some kickback or pushback on um, a video like this, but this is going to be my Sunday morning recap. I had a live stream on Friday night that I've been doing pretty regularly now. I guess it's like six in a row or something. And uh, a great crowd, great bunch of people that come on. And uh, we chat it up. I'm going to have some guests in the next couple of weeks. Once I figure out how to bring guests into OBS, that's a whole other thing. And then, you know, this OBS and streaming has exposed yet another sore spot for me with Avid. I mean, nothing works with Pro Tools like it does with the other programs. Nothing is easy. And the UA is is also a part of it. Like the console for UA, I just, I would love to just delete that damn thing. I can't stand it. But I'm stuck in Pro Tools right now until maybe I convert over to Studio One or Logic. They're better programs. They're better programs. But I'm stuck in Pro Tools right now. I got all my like all my projects are in it. Starting another one on Monday. It's gonna be in Pro Tools. And maybe I'll just cap it at like, you know, okay, all my production stuff in twenty twenty five will be either in Studio One or in Logic. And I'll mix in Pro Tools, maybe. Because like the recording side of Pro Tools and the integration with modern things or with things like OBS and with, 
you know, trying to screen cap, screen record and things. Like, I don't want to deal with black hole two channel and the console and virtual channels. Tired of it all. Hope you have a good day or a good week. I need my glasses to see the button where I have to hit stop recording. This is a new experiment, too. This is like just literally recording with my live stream rig instead of dealing with a camera and a lav and all this stuff. So I'm using my happy little Sennheiser Profile USB microphone. And uh, so far I'm enjoying it. Next week I'm trying out a new microphone on the new project. Well, tomorrow. Uh, the Lewitt 440 Pure or something like that I'm going to try using. That's it. Take it easy.